Hey, 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 it's Lewis with you here today, and welcome back, and thanks for tuning in to episode 45 of Lab Padres SpaceX and Starbase Weekly Updates. We've got some good info for you today, so let's dig in. Starting off this week, early Friday morning, load testing continued on the orbital launch mount to verify that the hold-down clamp arms are strong enough to support a fueled and loaded full stack. That afternoon, a new ring section was spotted. This is likely a test article and has what looks like 20 flanged ports equally spaced around the top. Saturday morning, once all 20 clamp arms had been tested, a crane lifted the testing rig out of the launch mount to be disassembled. On Sunday afternoon, Booster 7 was rolled out of Mega Bay for potentially its final trip to the launch mount. Unlike previous rollouts, however, the booster now appears to be having all of its shielding in place and may be in fact ready for flight. SpaceX closed the road and cleared the pad early Monday. Then shortly before 4, the chopsticks began lifting Booster 7 before placing it back on the orbital launch mount. By 7 a.m., the booster was securely clamped in place. The chopsticks then released it and lowered part way back down the tower to await their next task. A little over an hour later, near suborbital test stand B, SPMTs picked up Ship 24 and relocated it next to the orbital launch mount. Once the ship was parked at the orbital pad, the chopsticks lowered the rest of the way down to the base of the launch tower. Next, the booster quick disconnect was open, extended, and connected to Booster 7 to pressurize the vehicle and prepare it to support the ship. Ship 24 was then rolled forward and parked between the awaiting chopsticks, which then raised and closed to lock into the lifting points. By mid-afternoon, Mechazilla lifted Ship 24 into the air once again. The ship was swung into position above the booster, followed by the QD arm rotating back into position and the ship being placed onto the booster. The ship will have to be unstacked at least one more time to remove the lifting hooks and finish the heat shield. That evening, the ship quick disconnect panel on the QD arm was extended and connected to ship 24. Tuesday afternoon, Booster 9, having completed its initial cryo-proof testing, was rolled out of the launch site and down Highway 4, eventually ending up back inside Mega Bay for an engine installation. On Wednesday, the aft flaps were removed from Ship 22 in the Rocket Garden, a sign that it is soon destined for the scrapyard. Early on Thursday, prior to a day of what appeared to be GSE testing, SpaceX conducted another test of the FireX system on the orbital launch mount. On Friday, another test of the FireX system started a more exciting day of testing. Cryogenic liquids were loaded into both of the booster propellant tanks as venting poured from the launch tower. Eventually, venting was seen from the new vents in the ship's skirt that are piped to below the booster's grid fins. While we never saw a frost line on the ship, we did see the quick disconnect detach and later reconnect to ship 24. This ability to autonomously reconnect the second stage to the ground support infrastructure is something unique to the Starship. Thanks to tweets from SpaceX and Elon, we now know that they are moving into a new phase of testing, working up to a wet dress rehearsal and booster static fires with an aim to launch as early as late February. Switching over to Cape Canaveral, overnight Thursday into Friday, Our friends at Spaceflight Now caught the Chopsticks carriage assembly on its way from Roberts Road to the Launch Complex 39A. Friday evening, fairing recovery vessel Doug made its way out of Port Canaveral in support of the OneWeb 16 launch. On Saturday morning, the Buckner LR-11-350 at SpaceX's historic Launch Complex 39A lifted the Chopstick carriage and positioned it on the red beam of the assembly jig. That afternoon, Dragon Recovery Vessel Shannon also headed out to sea as backup for the splashdown of the CRS-26 resupply mission. On Monday morning, Bob, SpaceX's other fairing recovery vessel, also left port, heading to sea in support of the USS F-67 Falcon Heavy launch. Late that night, just 10 minutes before midnight, SpaceX launched their second OneWeb mission from Launch Complex 40 sending another 40 satellites to orbit. About eight minutes later, booster B-1076 lit its engines for the fourth and final time of the night, safely landing at LZ-1. 
Tuesday, SpaceX performed a successful static fire of the USS F-67 Falcon Heavy, lighting all 27 of the Merlin 1D sea level engines. On Thursday morning, the top dome of the outer shell of the new tank was finally lifted and installed at Historic Complex 39A. Around the same time, NASA's mobile launcher was rolled out of the Vehicle Assembly Building and over to the park site for upgrades to prepare it for the Artemis II mission. Thursday evening, the chopsticks were rolled out from Roberts Road by the VAB and Launch Complex 39A where they will be connected to the carriage before installation on the tower. Our photographer, the great Greg Scott, took to the Florida skies again this week to provide us with the first Cape flyover update of 2023. NASA's Launch Complex 39B is sitting empty now that the mobile launcher has moved to the park site after a brief stop in the vehicle assembly building. Launch Complex 39A continues to be a hive of activity as SpaceX builds up their Starship infrastructure while also launching Falcon 9s and Falcon Heavies from the site. The door of the horizontal integration facility was open ahead of the rollout of the USS F-67 Falcon Heavy rocket for its static fire. During the flyover, the top dome had not yet been installed on the new custom tank being built between the two launch towers. As we saw previously, the chopstick carriage is now positioned on the tall red beam of the assembly jig and the lower beam is visible to the side waiting for the shorter columns to be erected to hold it. At SpaceX's Space Launch Complex 40, Booster 1076 was on the pad just hours before it sent 40 OneWeb satellites to low Earth orbit. Moving several miles to the southwest, let's check on the SpaceX facilities on Roberts Road. Next to Hangar X, a sooty flight-proven booster sits outside the busy facility. To the west, half of the Roberts Road site is home to the future Cape Starship production facilities. SpaceX has now completed the first seven sections of their third Starship launch tower. On this latest tower, the seventh module has been shortened compared to the same section on the previous two towers. This is likely to reduce the weight of the higher lifts to accommodate the limitations of the crane and should result in the tower needing more than nine prefabricated modules to complete. At the time of the flyover, the LC-39A chopsticks were still at the assembly area being prepared for their Thursday evening trip to the pad. The QD arm is also still in the assembly area. It is likely that this will make its way to the pad for installation once the chopsticks and carriage have been assembled and lifted into place. Next to the QD arm, we can see the first pieces of the chopsticks for the third tower that is being prefabricated nearby. The short black pipes on the right side of the image are likely also for these next chopsticks. What will likely be SpaceX's first complete Star Factory building is nearing structural completion in the southwest corner of the site. Progress seems to have slowed since our last flyover update, but this is likely due to the workers taking time off for the holidays. As it is, there is only about a third of the taller section of the building left to complete structurally, and the roofing and cladding will likely follow close behind. In the final corner of the site, the two cranes continue to sit idle while waiting for steel work on the first of the Cape Mega Bays to get underway. Just a few miles to the south, Blue Origin continues to work expanding their Cape Canaveral production facilities. On the northern campus, the new two-cap building appears to be nearly ready to begin cleaning and testing new Glenn's second stages. The facility's southern campus is dominated by new construction. Foundation work is underway for the new composite assembly building. The structural steel for the expansion of the warehouse is now complete and the cladding is now being added to the walls of the addition. Roofing crews look to be nearly finished laying the roofing deck and preparing for insulation. Nearby we can see that the steel is now going up on the new vertical assembly building. The structure of the building is comprised of the truss wall box, columns with interconnecting steel. Behind the building, we can see additional column sections staged for installation. A single column frames each side of what will likely be the doorway of the front side of the building with supplemental steel connecting each of the adjacent walls. It is not yet clear if the back wall will mirror this design. The side walls, however, are each comprised of five of the truss wall box columns with steel connecting each of the ones on either side. 
A peek inside of Blue's active production buildings show us a rare glimpse of some new Glenn hardware. This looks like it could be a payload adapter that would go on the top of the second stage. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Blue Origin's Launch Complex 36 is currently awaiting the first flight-worthy New Glenn rocket. At Relativity Space's Launch Complex 16, the 3D-printed Terran 1 rocket is on the pad as the company works towards its first orbital flight. At United Launch Alliance's Space Launch Complex 37B, crews are working to prepare the ground support equipment for the next Delta IV heavy launch, which could happen as soon as March of this year. Their Launch Complex 41 is sitting vacant as it awaits the arrival of ULA's first Vulcan, which is currently en route from Alabama and could launch as soon as next month. Launch Complex 46 continues to sit idle as Astra works to develop their next generation of rocket following their issues with Rocket 3. Dragon recovery vessel Shannon was docked at Port Canaveral following its trip out to sea for the splashdown of the CRS-26 mission, which ended up occurring in the Gulf of Mexico and was recovered by Megan instead. A clearly labeled not-for-flight Falcon 9 fairing half was laying on the dock. This is used for fairing recovery training operations by SpaceX's vessels Bob and Doug. The deck of drone ship just read the instructions was covered with workers and equipment as SpaceX works to keep the vessel in usable condition during the lull in its recovery schedule. The newer drone ship, a short fall of Gravitas, was docked nearby as it was also between missions at the time. We are fortunate to catch a nice look at its octagrabber, which SpaceX uses to secure the Falcon 9 boosters to the drone ship's deck as they make their way back to port. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update with a splash of Blue Origin, Relativity Space, and ULA, brought to you by Lab Padre. We'll see you next week, and thanks for watching. Lab Padre, out.